What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you the week two recap for CWL Premiere. And what we're going to be doing in this video, we're going to switch it up a little bit, a little different than we did in week one. That video got way too long. I know not everybody has 40 minutes in their day to just sit and watch a a league recap so I definitely want to shorten it down the way we're gonna be doing it is I'm gonna break down what you guys are looking at on your screen right now each of the matchups from week two then we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a bunch of incredible attacks and uh, break down what happened in each of the wars to get to these star totals for the winners and for the losers and then we'll end with showing you guys the standings uh, how each of these clans are positioned in their division and then give you guys a sneak peek into what the matchups are for week three so without further ado we'll start off right at the top where we have fysb and one thing i will say this week was the week of the underdogs guys some big monster clans getting taken down and we're basing that off of what the pickums were if you guys don't know what that is i'll have a link for that down in the description but uh, again, starting off at the top, we have FYSB, 90% uh, in the Pickums took FYSB for the victory, as well as all three of us in the prediction video. Reddit Viper taking the victory from FYSB, 85 to 81. Uh, Emphatic Fury took on Valar Mugulis and won a six star, or excuse me, a seven star victory over VM, uh, the final 86 to 79. Oh, we had Unius Exercitus taking a loss to Gunma Samurai. 85 to 82 was the final. We have War Addicts uh, with a match, a very close war. Uh, war Addicts taking a narrow victory away from Grumpy Old Men. The final was 81 to 81. War Addicts winning on total destruction. Uh, next, we have Dark Looter X took on Kornfeld, the, their fellow Germans, uh, beating them 83 to 80. Uh, we have Bad Intentions took on Varhaisa uh Bad Intentions. Uh, also, they took that victory that was also a tie 80 to 80, winning by a slight margin on total destruction. We have Axew something taking a crushing defeat uh, to North Awakens. This was the, the, the biggest star differential. Uh, North Awakens winning by eight stars, the, uh, the total. Uh, to that one was 84 to 76. Huge uh, victory for North Awakens on that one. Uh, COC Hogwars took on Dragon Rejects. Uh, DR taking the victory. Had a very good showing compared to where they were in week one. Uh, winning 85 to 80. Above and beyond taking Gortoborg's Krieger. Another one where it was the underdogs taking the victory here we have Gortoborg's Krieger winning 81 to 79 a two-star victory over above and beyond TWSS uh taking a victory against Assassin's Corps the final 83 to 79 winning on four stars a uh, pretty big win for TWSS uh, we have meet the kings still falling a little flat uh they wore a swarm synergy uh SS getting a five-star victory the the total was 84 to 79. Uh, CWC Brawlers went head to head with BD Unbeatables. Uh, CWC Brawlers getting the one star victory, uh, but a pretty high scoring match, nevertheless. Uh, CWC Brawlers winning 85 to 84. King Jeffrey taking on One Hive Genesis. One Hive Genesis continuing uh, their little hot streak that they're on right now. Uh, they they beat King Jeffrey 83 to 81. And we have Art of War who took on Nottingham. Nottingham still cruising along. Uh, they won 84 to 81, a three star victory for them. We have From Molten Lava who took on Forbidden. Forbidden getting also a huge victory, uh, winning by six stars. From Molten Lava only putting up 78 on the board. And rounding off at the bottom, we have Gab uh, 
Gahazi Bomber 2, who took on Dark Avengers, getting a three-star victory of the final, 84 to 81. That rounds up all of the matchups from week two. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at some attacks that I was able to capture uh, visiting all of the clans. Shout out to all 32 of you guys. Starting off at the top, let's go and go ahead and take a look at one of the attacks from the Reddit Viper and FYSB War. All right, guys, starting off with our very first matchup that we're going to be highlighting. And what a big win this was, you guys, for Reddit Viper taking down the Monster Clan FYSB. Reddit Viper winning 85 to 81. So not only winning, but getting a four-star victory over FYSB. Uh, the stats for this war, uh, Reddit Viper, as you guys are looking at on your screen, this was the only 10v10 triple of the war. So Reddit Viper had one, FYSB was not able to execute a 10v10 three-star. Uh, breaking down the 10v11 game, this is where Reddit Viper outshined FYSB also in this category. FYSB uh, was only able to clear three out of the four uh, Town Hall 11s. Uh, they went three for 11 where Reddit Viper went four for seven. So they hit way above the league average, uh, clearing all of FYSBs uh, with their Town Hall 10s. And on the dip game, this was the big deciding factor as well. Uh, FYSB having two dip fails. Uh, so not horrible, definitely not the best either. Uh, so they did go six for eight. Uh, Reddit Viper, you guys, going eight for eight on the dip game, 100%. Um, 100% uh, on their 11v10 dip game. So on all three categories, they definitely outshined FYSB and were able to pull off a four-star victory. Remember, in the Pickums, FYSB was favored to win this war by over 90%. Uh, so big shout out to Reddit Viper and good luck to both of these clans going into week three. Do not count FYSB out, you guys. Uh, they definitely ran into a tough, uh, not only a tough matchup, but they had a tough war. Uh, but good luck to both of them going into week three. Next matchup that we're going to be uh, highlighting, DLX, who took on... Cornfield DLX getting the victory, winning 83 to 80, a three star victory for DLX. Uh, we'll go ahead and break down the stats. Uh, DLX had the one and only 10v10 triple of this war. Uh, they went one for five. They didn't have that many 10v10 opportunities because of their 10v11 game only going three for 14. So they did leave one of Kornfeld's uh, Town Hall 11s. They were not able to get that uh, Town Hall 11 doubled by DLX's Town Hall 10s. And DLX's dip game, they did have one dip fail. Uh, they did go seven for eight. Uh, covering Kornfeld stats, again, they did not have a 10v10 three-star this war. However, they did outshine DLX in the 10v11 department where uh, they went four for 13. So not only were they able to clear DLX's uh, Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s, but they used one less attack uh, than DLX did in trying to do so. This is where Kornfeld fell flat, you guys, only going four for eight uh, on their dips. They were not able to execute these dips and I know that they also had struggles back in week one. So something they're going to have to figure out and straighten out uh, going into week three and beyond uh, is their dip game. They definitely have to clean it up if they want to be competitive in this league. However, going uh, going four for 13 on their 10 v 11, they did have a lot of attempts, but they, they do have something to build off of going into week three. And I also wish... Uh, both of these clans going in uh, best of luck going into week three and congratulations to DLX pulling off the three star victory over Kornfeld. OK, next matchup uh, that we're going to be covering is COC Hogwarts taking on uh, Dragon Reject. COC Hogwarts still looking to get their first victory. Uh, they did suffer the loss uh, to DR. Uh, DR did get a five-star victory, absolutely huge, considering they only put up 74 stars back in week one. Uh, so the final to this war was 85 to 80 in Dragon Reject's favor. 
Uh, there were quite a few 10v10s this war, which was pretty exciting. Uh, CLC Hogwarts, uh, despite only putting up 80 stars, they did still have two 10v10 uh, triples going two for eight. Now, where CLC Hogwarts really struggled and where they have to figure out what they're going to be doing going forward is they have to clean up uh, their 10v11 game. Uh, only going one for 14. Uh, so definitely if they want to be competitive in this league, they have to figure out their 10v11 game. Uh, they And they on their dip game, their 11v10 dip game, they did go six for seven, only having one dip fail. Uh, that other Town Hall 11 hit went to try to clear one of DR's Town Hall 11s, considering, again, they only went one for 14, uh, trying to double... DR's Town Hall 11's. DR stats did look a lot better though. Uh, they did go uh, 3 for 13. So they had 3 10v10's this war guys. Uh, so a big big improvement uh, from week 1. Uh, their week 1 performance. Uh, 10v11 they did go 5 for 9. Uh, so this breakdown was a little heavier uh, than the traditional 4 10 breakdown that we're used to seeing. And on their 11v10 dip game, they did have two dip fills going 8 for 10. Uh, so they definitely have a lot of stuff to build off of. And they have some momentum now going into week 3. Uh, putting up some big numbers. Putting up 85 stars in this really heavy breakdown. Uh, again, getting three 10v10s and clearing all of CLC Hogwarts Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. So big shout out to DR. Uh, again, they only put up 74 stars when they warred Grumpy Old Man back in week one. Uh, so now this brings CLC Hogwarts again. Uh, still looking for their first victory. They did go, uh, they're now 0-2. Dragon Rejects, however, are now 1-1 one one on the season. Okay. Next matchup we're going to get into, this was another one uh, similar to Reddit Viper and FYSB. Above and beyond taking the loss, you guys, uh, to go to Borks Krieger. Uh, go to Borks Krieger suffered the loss uh, to One Hive Genesis back in week one. Uh, however, they did take the victory in this war, uh, winning 81 to 79. So stopping above and beyond in their tracks, not even able to put up 80 stars uh, in week two. Uh, so definitely some good bases uh, that Gotobor's Creek is putting up. Breaking down the stats, uh, we have above and beyond still were able to manage to squeeze out two 10v10 triples. And we know that they rocked it back in week one as well. Uh, so definitely have some good momentum just with that alone uh, going into week three. 10v11 where they, they they did struggle. They only went three for 11, leaving one of go to Trias Town Hall 11s. They were not able to double. Uh, however, their 11v10 dip game only going four for seven. Not sure what exactly happened there, uh, but definitely have to clean it up. And I'm sure they'll be able to do it uh, above and beyond. It is still a very uh, powerful clan and a, a definitely a force to be reckoned with uh, within Premier despite taking this loss. Uh, Gotobor's Krieg going one for seven. They still picked up a 10v10 triple. They went four for 17 on the 10v11 game. Uh, so definitely something to build off of and they have some momentum with that alone also going into week three and they did have two dip fills going six for eight. Uh, not horrible. Again, not the best, but congratulations to them getting the victory over above and beyond you guys. I got to wait a little bit. One to 79. All right. Tired. Next matchup that we're going to be covering so sleepy, is Swarm Synergy. Uh, who took on Meet the Kings, chip. Swarm Synergy, uh, getting a five-star victory against Meet mm -hmm. the Kings, winning 84 to 79. Mm -hmm. And the stats are pretty much lopsided uh, in this war. Uh, Meet the Kings were not able to execute at 10v10. And keep in mind, they only put up 78 stars uh, back in, in the week store. One. What do you mean? So Go sit down and watch the movie. Some struggles in premiere. Uh, from week one, also in week two as well. Uh, 10 v 11, uh, they went three for 10. So they, they, they left up one of Swarm Synergy's Town Hall 11s. Uh, they were not able to double. Their 11 v 10 dip game going six for eight. So they did have two dip fails. Swarm Synergy smashing the 10 v 10 game, you guys. Uh, they went four for nine 
uh, almost uh, hitting at 50%. Uh, however, similar to Meet the Kings, uh, they also had some uh, 10 v 11 wolves going 3 for 11. And they went on their 11 v 10 uh, dips. They had one dip fill. They went 5 for 6. However, uh, they did have an 11 v 11 triple uh, this war. So big shout out to Swarm Synergy. I believe there were only two 11 v 11 triples. Swarm Synergy grabbing one of them. Uh, what you guys are looking at on your screen was an incredible dragon attack from none other than Ryan. We saw a lot of him uh, back in uh, season two. Uh, last season uh, when he was in We Are Spartans. Still making the recaps. Uh, again, now he's over in Swarm Synergy doing it with this epic dragon attack. And uh, I definitely want to show you guys one of their 10 v 10s considering they had four of them. I uh, definitely have to show them some love. I do have the 11 v 11 uh, triple recorded that you guys can have a chance to look at when the prediction video drops. So make sure you guys uh, check out the predictions video for week three where you can also check out uh, their 11 v 11 triple. So uh, Swarm Synergy uh, getting the victory 84 to 79. Meet the Kings still looking for their first victory on the season. Next matchup, uh, two clans that not a lot of people have heard of but put up some huge numbers. Uh, the final to this war was 85 to 84. Uh, COC Brawlers getting the victory. Uh, but BD Unbeatables are still putting up a lot of stars uh, despite being 0-2 on the season. Still a clan to look out for. Uh, real quick, we'll cover the stats while we watch this uh, uh, 10v10 attack on your screen. Uh, CWC Brawlers did have two 10v10 triples this war. Uh, they did. Um, they were able to clear all of BD Unbeatable's Town Hall 11s uh, with their Town Hall 10s. Uh, their stats there were 4 for 14, uh, so a little bit below the league average. However... They were able to clear all their 11s, which is absolutely huge. And it's to the point to where it's really deciding a lot of these wars. Uh, where CWC Brawlers really shine in this war, again, not only getting two 10v10s, um, but they uh, went 7-for-7 seven seven, uh, on their dips. So big shout out to them. So they have um, all kinds of momentum going into week three. BD Unbeatables do not have horrible stats, however. Uh, they did have one 10v10 triple. And they hit it 50% on uh, their 10v11s, uh, going 4 for 8. So definitely something to build off of uh, going into week 3 as well. And they did have one dip fail, which um, they did fall short 1 10v10 compared to CWC Brawlers. But only had one dip fail going 7 for 8. So definitely not horrible, um, you know, only having one dip fail. So they do have... Uh, quite a bit of momentum going into uh, week three. Again, we haven't heard a lot of a lot of either one of these clans, uh, but pu again, putting up these numbers and putting up these stats, uh, something to definitely look out for. Uh, look out for CBC Brawlers and BD Unbeatables. Don't count either one of these clans out, guys. Um, especially putting up these star totals. And what you guys are looking at on your screen was just a beautiful Queen Charge Lalo uh, from Prince Alex uh, coming from CWC Brawlers, as you guys uh, just saw it right there on your screen. Uh, so big shout out to them, uh, picking up the victory, a one-star victory over BD Unbeatables. Next uh, matchup that we're going to be covering is Emphatic Fury, who took on Valar Mugulis in what was a huge victory uh, seven star victory uh, for emphatic, uh, uh, an emphatic elite for emphatic fury, uh, putting up huge numbers. Varmogul is still struggling, uh, trying to put up numbers. Uh, I know they ran a forty v forty, so the star differential is kind of hard uh, to pay attention to since it's not a generic breakdown like a four ten breakdown. Uh, but are still struggling as we'll go ahead and get into the stats. But we have Emphatic Fury who uh, put up two 10v10 triples this war and they went uh, four for seven on the 10v11 game. So definitely hitting above the league average. Again, going four for seven 
Uh, so they had no problem clearing Vlar Mugulis's, uh Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. And the huge stat uh, to cover on this one, you guys, is they went 8 for 8 on their dips, hitting at 100%, which that alone, even without the 10v10s, uh, decided this war. Uh, Valar Mogulis was still able to pick up a 10v10 uh, triple, uh, so shout out uh, to them, something to build off of. Uh, where they fell flat was the 10v11 game and the 11 uh there are 11 dips on the Town Hall 10s. Uh, 10 v 11, they went two for nine. Uh, so they were not able to clear, uh, they were only able to clear two out of the four uh, Town Hall 11s on the map. And because of that, they only, they went four for six. So they only had six uh, 11 v 10 uh, dip attempts. They failed two of them. And those other Town Hall 11 attacks went to Emphatic Elite uh, trying to clear their 11s. Uh, with 11s, you know, trying to get uh, the three star, we're not able to get it done. And again, only putting up 79 stars uh, on the map. Uh, so definitely have to figure out what's going on there. We saw that they struggled uh, back in week one. We're, we're also seeing it in week two. Uh, you know, they have a few things they can build off of. They did get a 10 v 10 triple. They did go one for six, uh, but they have to get those uh their Town Hall 11 game nailed down as well as their dip game in order to give them more ta uh, Town Hall 10 three-star attempts. Uh, but best of luck to both of these clans uh, going into week three. And uh, yeah, so in, in Fatic Fury getting a huge victory, a seven-star victory nevertheless over Valar Mugulis. And we just saw a beautiful uh, 10 v 11 attack uh, from Emphatic Fury. Okay, next up we have Gunma Samurai who took on the newcomers. Well, technically they're both newcomers, but uh, uh, Unius Exercitus uh, being a brand new clan in general. Uh, we have Gunma Samurai continuing to plow through these clans. Uh, go, uh, the final to this war was 85 to 82. Uh, so Gunma Samurai picking up a three star victory over Unius Exercitus. Uh, UE, however, did uh, outperform them uh, with Town Hall 10 three stars. Uh, they put up two versus Gunma Samurai, only getting one. Uh, 10 v 11. This is where Gunma Samurai outshined everybody in the league. They went four for four uh, on their 10 v 11 attempts, hitting at 100%. Uh, definitely. Uh, way better than anybody else in the league, uh, at least in week two, uh, where UE w uh, went um, three for, f uh, what was that, three for 14 uh, on the 10 v 11s. Uh, 11 v 10, they went five for seven. So they had, um, on their dip game, UE had uh, two dip fails. That other 11, Town Hall 11 attack went to try to clear one of the 11s uh, that they were not able to double. Uh, Gunma Samurai, again, going 4 for 4, you guys, hitting at 100% um, on their 10v11 game. And went 100% on their dips. So we have seen, uh, not all the clans, but we have seen quite a few clans who went perfect on their dips, which only sets you up, uh, I mean, for a victory. It definitely puts you in the driver's seat when you go 100% on your dips. And one one unique thing that Gunma Samurai did that I have not seen before uh, going over their stats and visiting their clan is they dipped something like nine, 10 of their uh, Town Hall 10 or 9 of their Town Hall 10s went and dipped down on the 9s, cleared them right off the bat to ensure they had a bunch of scouts uh, on all their Town Hall 10s, on all of you East Town Hall 10s. Something interesting that you don't see, but wanted to get that out there. Not sure if they're just ahead of the meta or what, uh, but that's why if you guys look at those stats, uh, they went 9 for 9 on their 10 v 9 uh, dips in order to ensure they got all of the Town Hall 10s scouted. Next up, um, as we move right along here, One Hive Genesis, you guys, is back and in full effect. They are now 2-0 on the season with their victory over King Jeffrey, the final, 83-81. to So OHG getting a two-star victory over KJ. Uh, both clans put up two 10v10 uh, triples this war. Uh, so shout out to both of them. 
And the 10v11s, this is where KJ completely fell flat, which is interesting because I believe they went four for six uh, back in week one. That was not the case in week two. Uh, 10v11, they only went one for 10, you guys. Uh, not sure what exactly happened there. Uh, I'm sure they know what they have to do to clean it up considering how well they performed back in week one uh, on the 10v11 action. But against OHG's uh, Town Hall 11s, we're only able to go one for 10, hitting at 10%. Uh, 11v10, uh, they went uh, three for five uh, on their dips. And because they, they had so few uh, opportunities to dip on the 10s with their 11s, because all those 11 attacks went uh, for 11v11 attempts. However, they did have, uh, despite getting a loss, uh, King Jeffrey did have the other 11v11 uh, three star. Again, you can check that out. Uh, I do. I did get that attack recorded, which will be on the prediction video. OHG though, you guys uh, getting two 10v10 three stars, hitting at 50%, uh, 10v11. Uh, they did go four for eight. Um, and just, I mean, they did get the victory. However, they went five for eight on their dips. Got to clean that up. They could have easily uh, put 86 stars on the board uh, if they were able to clear uh if they, if they went perfect on their dips, they would have put 86 stars up on the map. Uh, so they did have three dip fills, something that they got to clean up. But they had they went very, they performed very well uh, on the 10v11 game and getting two 10v10 triples. Okay, next matchup, guys. We have Nottingham and Art of War. So we have the newcomers uh, versus, uh, well, I guess, the season vets. Uh, Art of War was in season two in Premiere. So we have Nottingham taking the victory, you guys, 84 to 81, a three-star victory, a resounding win for Nottingham, uh, getting a three-star victory over Art of War. Uh, there were four 10v10 uh, three-stars uh, this war, Art of War picking up two, as well as Nottingham picking up two. Uh, Art of War, where they fell flat, was 10v11, going two for 17. Again, not sure what exactly happened there, but have to clean that up uh, going into week three and beyond. Uh, you cannot go two for 17 and win many wars, especially as competitive as so many of these clans are uh, this season. And they only went uh, four for six on their di on their 11 V10 dips. Again, those extra Town Hall 11 hits. Uh, the reason why I was four for six is they went to try to clear uh, Nottingham's 11s with their 11s. Uh, Nottingham, like I said before, they had two 10v10 three stars. Uh, they went four for 10, uh, 10v11. So they were able to clear um, all of Art of War's Town Hall 11s with their, with their Town Hall 10s. And Nottingham, however, they went six for eight. So they had two dip fills. Again, not the greatest, not the worst either. Uh, but they, yeah, they did go six for eight on their 11 v10 dips and what you guys are looking at right now is one of their uh one of their two 10 v10 triples uh of this war and doing it with hogs we did see quite a few hog attacks as well as dragon attacks uh throughout the league uh so big shout out to nottingham and picking up another victory they are 2-0 and on the season now uh, art of war uh falling to 0-2 uh, so again, best of luck to both of these clans going into uh, week three. All right, for our final uh, highlighted war that I want to uh, cover for you guys, we have Forbidden who took on from Molten Lava getting a huge victory, uh, a six-star victory uh, over from Molten Lava. And again, FML only able to put up 78 stars on the map. Uh, back in week one, they... Were able to eke out 80 stars, uh, so they have to increase how uh, those that star total uh, if they want to win win some wars uh, this season. Uh, and if we cover the stats, the FML did not have a 10v10 three star this war, only going one for 13 on their 10v11 game. So they have, if they want to remain competitive. They have got to clean up the 10v11 game, have to figure out what is working, and definitely build off of what is not working. 11v10, uh, they went 4 for 5. Uh, again, they had so few opportunities to dip on the 10s with their 11s because those 11 hits 
uh, because they only went one for 13, they had to send those Town Hall 11 attacks for 11v11 three-star attempts. Uh, they were not able to execute one. Forbidden, however, um, definitely hot and cold. We have Forbidden. They did get a, a 10v10 three-star. They went four for seven uh, on their 10v11 uh, attacks. Uh, so definitely above the league average. Uh, not only did they clear all of FML's Town Hall 11s with their 10s, but they only did it in seven tries. And they only, and they only had one dip fail. So for Forbidden, looking very good uh, going into week three. Uh, they're now 2-0 and on the season. From Molten Lava is now, uh, they're now 1-1. One one. Uh, so they got the victory back in week one took the loss in week two. Best of luck to both of these clans going forward. FML just has to clean up their 10v11 game and get some 10v10s on the map. And when they when they perform 10v11, that ensures that they have more opportunities to dip and put more stars on the map. Again, best of luck to both of these clans going into week three and a resounding victory, uh, six-star victory for... All right, as you guys saw, we just recapped all the wars that went down at the start of the video and all the outcomes, as well as witnessing some insane attacks all coming from week two in CWO Premier. Uh, now we'll go ahead and take a sneak peek at what's going to be going down this weekend in week three. Starting off at the top, we have FYSB versus COC Hogwarts. Emphatic Fury is going to be taking on Axew something. Uh, Unius Exercitus versus Bad Intentions. And that is going to be a very good war, a good war to pay close attention to. We have War Addicts versus Dark Looter X. Above and Beyond versus Gahazi Bomber 2. Another epic heavy hitter showdown. Uh, coming from that matchup TWSS versus From Molten Lava we have Meet the Kings going to be challenging Art of War CWC Brawlers versus King Jeffrey uh, next up we have Gunma Samurai going to be taking on Varhai Seleke Grumpy Old Men taking on Kornfeld uh, next up, we have Reddit Viper versus Dragon Rejects. Another good war to pay close attention to. Uh, both of these clans really performed uh, very well in week in week two. Uh, we have Valar Mugulis going to be taking on North Awakens. Swarm Synergy versus Nottingham. Another epic heavy hitter showdown. Uh, another war to uh, pay close attention to as well. Uh, we have BD Unbeatable is going to be challenging on, are going to be challenging the surging One Hive Genesis. Uh, Gotoborg's Krieger taking on Dark Avengers. And rounding off at the bottom, we have Assassin's Core versus Forbidden. I really hope you guys enjoyed this week two recap for CWO Premiere and all the footage uh, that was captured. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.